Mama! Emma! How is my baby? Good. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, good to see Come, you. Come, I made some breakfast. Oh! He knows, Ma. He smelled it across the hall. No, I was just passing her. And I said, ah, let me call my great mommy, since, <laughs> you know? Come on, come on, have it. What if well. you insist? Yeah, of course I'm insisting. You're my son. Can you stop pulling his leg? Emma is Raj's next door neighbor in the apartment complex they live in on Victoria Island, which is one of the wealthiest areas in Nigeria. It's not explicitly said that he lives next door, but when Raj's mother visits, Emma comes knocking after smelling the good food from across the hall. So if our boy can afford to live on Victoria Island next door to a successful Indian investment banker, we can assume he must be doing pretty well for himself, all right? He's okay, or at least okay at JC. One of the only personal things we know about Iman is that his family is financially dependent on him and he doesn't like it one bit. The argument can even be made that he doesn't like them. They are a fundraiser for an NGO that helps women dealing with issues like abuse. Iman refers to it as an event and Raj calls it a party. Don't worry, we're going to talk about this film's poor handling of the violence against women storyline extensively. Oh wow, why will your mom stop calling you so much? That's what happens when you're an only child. Abi, unlike me and my blood-sucking siblings. Whoa, that's harsh. I beg. What's harsh is them calling me every five minutes. Brother Ima, I've not paid my school fees. Brother Ima, landlord called again. I'm tired. Every minute, one money trouble or the other. That's why you have to, how do you guys say it, uh, to hammer? Ah, I need it badly. Maybe that's why I followed you to this event. Maybe somebody can invest in my music career. Demo in one hand, business plan in the other. I'm going in. Watch and learn. Best of luck. Raj is on the phone with his mother who calls him all the time. When he hangs up, Im asks him, what's up with that? Raj says it's the price he pays for being an only child. And this is the opening Ima has been waiting for. He tells Raj how lucky he is to be an only child, how he is constantly bombarded with calls from his blood-sucking siblings, talking about, Brother Ima, we need money for school fees, and Brother Ima, the landlord has called. Raj is justifiably taken aback by the whole his siblings are bloodsuckers thing, but the film glosses over it, and we move on. I'm convinced that the reason Ima says it's his siblings who are bloodsuckers is because there's a societal expectation to help your parents but not so much your siblings. You can bitch about helping your parents, but there's an underlying expectation that you do it anyway and not call them bloodsuckers while doing it. After all, your siblings, it is assumed, had the same opportunities you did. And if you have made something of yourself, what's the excuse, huh? 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 You know, same parents, same social class, same 24 hours in a day. The argument can be made that you owe your parents for the numerous sacrifices they made to get you where you're at, but none can be made for owing your siblings, ergo siblings, bloodsuckers. In a conversation that you can find online between James Baldwin and Nikki Giovanni, something similar comes up. James Baldwin talks about coming close to getting married, but not doing it because it would have been irresponsible. It would have been irresponsible because he had his siblings to support. They were seven or eight siblings, and he had no stable source of income to speak of. He would not have been able to support his siblings, then add a wife and his own children to that. When he tells Nikki Giovanni that, she says those were his father's children, not his. Jim says that's immaterial. His father was dead. And so they were his responsibility. They were his children. I quite agree with you, but this is something we have to confront. When I was 22, I was, like, I was about to get married. And for several reasons, I threw my wedding rings in the river, and that was when I split. You know, decided I would leave. I didn't get married partly because I, just, I partly because it, partly because I had no future. It's very very important. You had you know, no future. I had no right, future. Sure. I, oh, no, you got to go back to where I was. Yeah, twenty two. You know, okay. I had no future. I I couldn't keep a job. You no, know, because I couldn't stand the people I was working for, and there wasn't. A, I couldn't. Nobody could call me a nigger. It's not a small. You no. Know, yeah, a little bit. No. <laughs> so I split. You know. Now, I love that girl, and I wanted children. But I already had eight, and they were all starving. Yeah. 
And from my point of view, it would have been an act of the most criminal irresponsibility to bring another mouth into the world which I could not feed. Yeah, but you see, those weren't your children. Those were your father's children. My father was dead. That's not the And point. as far as they knew, then... That's not what you, you... One cannot... And I'm not knocking I'm not, your I'm, life, you know I'm what not, I mean? Because I could... But one cannot be responsible for what one has I not said produced. we are not being rational. But I said we must. I mean, that's no, no, no. my quarrel with no, the world. No, no. We my, must become my, rational. My, those are my brothers and sisters. They were your brothers rational and sisters. Or not. They were but starving. they were your father's children but and they, your mother's children. That was my father's responsibility. As far as I was concerned, they belonged to me. Mickey shows this widespread belief that your siblings are not your responsibility. Not really. James Baldwin's position is obviously the one I gravitate towards. We owe each other. We just do. James Baldwin's problem and Emma's problem is that of black tax. Black tax is a term that originated in South Africa and that refers to the extra money that black professionals are expected to send every month to support their less fortunate nuclear and extended families. It's all those sacrifices, financial and otherwise, that black people have to make to support their less fortunate relatives. One of my biggest problems with the way black tax is framed and the way Emma uses it is the way it lays the blame on poor black people. Poor, vulnerable black people are blamed when it is they who are the victims of a system set up to keep them down and keep them poor. He calls his siblings bloodsuckers, and why? They call him to ask him, beg, really, for money to pay school fees and rent. Nothing fancy, just the basics. Are there people who take advantage of the fact that their siblings have made it and are willing to support them? Doubtless they are. This is the case for one of the ladies in the film, The Smart Money Woman, also from Nigeria. That's not the case here, and I think that people in need of genuine help far exceed those who deliberately take advantage of their relatives. This, this is reminiscent of America and the welfare queens thing. It just, it really reeks of that. Let me see if I can remember what the whole welfare queens thing was about. Um, it was founded on this racist notion that black women were taking social security and then just really living it up on their money, right? Like they were purposefully not working so that they could just get the money and then just like, you know, buy designer shit and just like live their best lives on welfare on the dime of hardworking Americans. And that was never the case. Number one, more there were more poor white people on welfare. And number two, the people on welfare were truly poor people and, and remain people who were really destitute, people who were in a bad way. They're not people who are taking advantage of a system. And this is the same logic that's being used here in relation to people who are being supported by their families. There's this consistent effort to make it seem like they're just taking advantage of people. They're just refusing to work so that they can, you know, leech on their relatives, you know, like Ima and his alleged blood-sucking siblings, and that's not the case. For the most part, people who need help from their relatives are people who are really struggling. I mean, it's just interesting to me how this sort of logic of demonizing poor people finds its way <laughs> everywhere. It just it finds its way. Majority of these people are in terrible social and economic positions, and in true capitalist logic, somehow it's their fault that they need help and are burdening us with it. People who need our help are not exploiting us. If there's something actively causing us harm, it's the system, not them. Whatever has made them dependent on us is the problem, not their dependence on us. African culture is by its nature social and communal. Supporting each other is a significant chunk of our philosophy. So this idea of viewing helping each other as a tax and a burden is just so unfortunate. We help and support each other. It's what we do. We live with family members who need help and send money home and show up for each other in all the ways we can. How is this not a beautiful thing? How is this not revolutionary? Isn't this how we fight against a system that's constantly trying to kill us? Isn't this how we keep each other alive against all odds? There's a poem by Audre Lorde that Stacey and Chen performs beautifully, which says we were never meant to survive. And we weren't. We are not meant to survive. Giving to each other, supporting each other, fundraising for each other is how we ensure our survival in a system designed to kill us. My point is the issues are systemic, and I know we say this all the time for everything now, but maybe that's because it's true. 
The real problems, if we're interested in getting to the root of it, are capitalism, racism, sexism, colonialism, and other forms of imperialism and exploitation. The problem is inequality and all the systems that entrench it. The people who need our help are not the problem. And the fact that we help is also not the problem. The problem is the larger factors at play that have put those people in a position where they have to rely on our kindness to survive. It's true that this issue disproportionately affects black people wherever they are. It's true that it sets black people back. It's true that it's a burden of sorts on the people financially supporting their families. It's even true that those black people may not reach the same level of financial security as people of other races in a similar income bracket. Yes, all black people would fare better in a society in which people's needs are met. The idea here is not to diminish the pressure that the people supporting their families are under. It's just to point out that the people who are suffering are not our enemies. They are not the problem. They are in fact the victims. You may be a victim as well, but if there was victim Olympics, the people who need your help to survive would win. It's just crazy how they're the ones in a vulnerable situation and some of the focus is on the people who are doing better financially. Full disclosure, I struggle both sides of the black tax thing. I'll send a little money home and sometimes someone, my mom, sends money and food stuff to me. My mom is great when it comes to this. It never feels like, ooh, like you're draining me. You're a blood sucker. It just feels like you all love you, you know? How you doing? He's so nice, right? He's so many. Like, that's what it is. It's never, it never feels like, you know, you need to be working hard so that, like, I don't have to do these things. So I'm not forced to do these things or I don't feel the need to do these things. It's never that. It's just, you know, I'm thinking about your love here. Is like, I'm sending some beans over. I'm sending some money over. And I don't know if you have ever. So this is not my mom. My mom is great. But if you have ever been on the wrong side of that arrangement. Where it feels like you're setting that person back. Right? Where it feels like you're a burden to them. There's no worse feeling than that. I don't know that there's a worse feeling than that. Than being in a vulnerable place financially and then having somebody else make you feel like, like you're a burden. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. Um, I do this with other people too, right? Um, other people who are not family members, like I'll send them something. Sometimes they ask me, often they ask me, um, often they ask me, I'll, I'll send them something, right? And I'll say this, any day, any time, I'd rather be the one sending remittances than the one on the other end of that call, trying to find the language to ask for help. One more time, having gathered all my courage to make that single call. Any day, any day. I'd rather be the one whose blood is being actively sucked than the one constantly exposing my poverty and lack, hoping this other person considers me worthy of helping. I think that people like Emma forget that they are in a far better position than their relatives who call asking for money to pay rent or something. If you're Emma, you can say no. I don't have anything now. Or just no. I not even follow up with a reason, honest or made up. You have the power. And if you've ever had to beg for money or been dependent on someone else for life's necessities, you know which one is the better option to be in. You know. Emma, in this film, lives on Victoria Island, one of the wealthiest areas in Nigeria. And the film wants us to identify with him and feel sorry for him for having to deal with his blood-sucking relatives on African soil where each paycheck supports more than an individual's immediate family, these people want us to view his siblings as the problem. They want us to vilify them and view him as the true victim, sight unseen. Here, where we live, face to face with poverty, and majority of us are one small financial emergency away from being the ones making those phone calls, they want us to demonize his siblings. I don't know about you, but that's a big ask.